Hello, this is Robbie Pony here doing my own personal commentary on the story known as The Unstable Wing of Ponyville Hospital by Twisted Skittles. Now, while I'm doing this commentary, I will, I must say, there will be spoilers. So if you haven't either listened to my previous readings on this or haven't, you know, read the story yourself, I recommend you go do one of those aforementioned, you know, things. And I have a link to this story in the description below, and the playlist for this, you know, my readings of it are, in fact, on my channel. So take a look at that, and feel free to support me if you can. Otherwise, you're entering spoiler territory, so you are, you've now been warned. Now, the story has been labeled with the, ta with the tags dark, sad and tragedy all of which i could say you know in my opinion all apply now some people disagree on some of these but i would say all apply is it dark yes it is dark let me explain why it's dark it's dark because I and mean, we're basically witnessing ponies being abused by their own kind i mean it's not as it's not grim i mean it's not as grim as let's say you know, cupcakes, but it, or rain, Rainbow Factory for that matter, but it is definitely dark. We have been ponies being abused. I mean, there's even a chapter where it's mentioned that one of the crazy ponies actually killed others' ponies and basically bathed them in their blood. I mean, that's pr pretty dark. So, yes, it is indeed a dark fic. Is it sad? Of course it's sad. You, I mean, that's like actually the main thing that pulls you into the story is the fact that you actually feel sad for the characters. You feel sad that Pinkie Pie is trapped here despite the fact that she's perfectly sane. Well, at least by our standards, she's perfectly sane. Um, you feel bad for Derpy. I mean, she's ba basically the reason she's there is because she's been discriminated against because of her eyes, you know, being kind of different. And, you know, it's like... A lot, you know, with the exception of a few characters, a lot of them are there due to unfortunate mishaps. And so, it's, yeah, it's sad. Now, as for tragedy, I've heard many, I've heard lots of people actually argue that it's not a tragedy. Because, in the end, it is a, you know, it's a, you know, people, you know, it's a good ending. And people like to think it's a happy ending. And I have to say, you know, if you really think about it, it's not. It's not, I mean, it's a good ending, but it's not a happy ending, and to some extent it is kind of a sad, tragic ending. Now, let me explain. Sure, everybody goes home. Everybody, you know, goes, you know, basically, you know, gets to kind of live, you know, get, you know, everybody gets a happy route, but it, is it that happy? I mean, think about it. Let's talk, for example, let's talk about Screwless. There's a conversation, there's a sort of a mental, com mental section where Pinky's kind of Th you know, we're thinking back, and one part she talks, you know, it mentions that she, in fact, knows that Screw Loose is, in fact, basically has two personalities the dog and the actual original personality, the pony. Despite this, though, in the end, Screw Loose is still treated and looked upon as a dog. She's no. She there's no tr no one trying to treat her to you know to you know try to get her back to her original self. There, there's no one trying to do that. I mean, basically, she's now being trained as a treated as a dog by Pinkie Pie and Screwball. You know, it's like so. You know, look at that. That's pretty sad. Think about it, they're all. You know, a lot of them are covered. You know, a lot of them have been cut and scarred by these guards, and they're still gonna have those. Not only that, but it's like, you know, if you think about it, the fact that these people were part of the hospital means it's actually a tragedy for the hospital as well. The, you know, as soon as everybody finds finds out that this thing happened, sure, you know, it, this, all the staff were, you know, for, from that section were replaced, and who had impact, you know, who impacted that se you know, section of the hospital were replaced, but. The reputation of the hospital is still soiled. You know, there's still going to be ponies who are like, you know, members of Ponyville who are like, you know, it's like if you get a choice between going there or going somewhere else, you know, they, they might prefer to go somewhere else. You know, the hospital's reputation has been marred 
by these, you know, these ponies that basically went out, you know, these, these bad employees. Yeah, so, um, so that, so that's two points right there. Screwloose is still treated as a, you know, despite being a pony and despite there being knowledge that there is in fact a pony in there, is still treated as a dog. That's one sad point, you know, tragedy. Another tragedy, the hospital's reputation is marred. And then, you know, there's a few others, if you really think about it. You know, it's like Screwball. I mean, there's not, we didn't really get to know much about Screwball. But, you know, it's like, you know, as far as we know, she still is quote-unquote discorded. You know, she still has an eye thing. You know, the that feature. The hypnotized eye look to them. Um, mind twists. You know, it's like she, you know, as far as this story lets us know, she, you know, it's like she's off trying to find her parents. And there's implications that her parents are dead. So it's like, in the end, we still, it's like, it's still sad because she's still looking for them, but her search is in vain. You know, it's, it's indeed a tragedy. It, you know, I don't get why people look at it and say it's not, because really it is. I mean, there's, it is to some extent a tragedy. Now, is it a happy, does it, is it any happy? Yes. I mean, Derpy and Dr. Hooves go, you know, fly away in the TARDIS, I guess, or whatever the, they refer to the blue uh, police box to, you know, as in the MLP universe. And, you know, to some extent, yes, Pinky, you know, Pinky goes back home. You know, Luna gets to go back home, but it's like, you know, it's still tragic. Now, I guess let's talk, so I've talked about that. Let's talk about something else. Um, I guess the presence of Dr. Hooves in this, uh, story, you know, at first, you know, I either say, to some extent, I kind of, it's like with some stories, I l don't like unoriginality, you know, like where someone introduces, um, the ideas that somebody else has in, you know, has made from the show. I mean, for instance, the Lyra Bonbon bon being lesbians, that's... You know, it's been overused. It's it's not original, and a lot of people use it. And while, and and for me, it annoys me because it, anno it annoys me whenever people, you know, they have an impression of something that's not addressed in the show, and instead of trying to look at it from a different route, they merely go with what they think, you know, it is. And unfortunately, and then what happens is, well, I should know not what they think, but they go with what ev the community thinks, and it's like, uh, so. It's like, you know, there's been this thought about Dr. Hose, and it's like, you know, I actually was not bothered by it in this fanfic. In some fanfics, it would bother me, but in this one, it didn't. Now, I, I will say, I think there should be a bit more background on it. There should be a bit more explanation, you know, to it. Because if you haven't actually looked at some Dr. Hose things, you would have no idea, like, why does it matter that Derpy is with Dr. Hooves and all that? And it's like... A lot of people don't know that in the that Doctor Who is supposed, to, you know, it's like Derpy is like his assistant, you know, much like the doctors in Doctor Who. Um, so, but it's like you know, it it didn't like I said, it didn't really bother me. I just think there could have been a bit more detail given on it, and I think if there was more detail, it would probably be a, a bit more. It, it would definitely be really good. It's still good. I still enjoyed it. Let's see, what else can I talk about? Um, to some extent, the one thing I did I do kind of have a, a quim against is that, um, like with the other, the, the remaining main, the other members of the main six, it's like every time you see them up until near the end, it's like, well, and the beginning, you know, where basically Pinky talks to them about her encounter with Screwloose. It's like a lot of them, a lot of it is about them worrying about her. And while I understand that, it's not, it doesn't feel kind of, it doesn't feel natural because they're not off trying to do other things. It's like they're just getting together to talk about how they miss her. And it's like, you know, I think maybe if there was some showing of like what they do, like maybe, maybe there could have been like a chapter with like maybe Twilight goes to see Applejack and talks to, you know, ask, talks to her about it. While Applejack is like bucking apples, or maybe talks to Rarity while she's making a dress, you know, in her boutique, you know, that I think would have been a bit better. 
it, and, you know, but you know, I will say this is one of my favorite fanfics. You know, it, despite you know, like I said, despite some of the grammar issues, which I I found a few, um, I really enjoyed it. I I enjoyed the fic, and I and I will say I actually enjoyed the sequel. The which well, it's not quite a sequel. The the follow, the story that follows up, which is Mind Twist, and I'm not going to talk about that too much because I will probably do a commentary on that when I do a reading of that story, which will not. It, it's kind of hard to say because it's like I done I've read a few of the chapters on you know from Mind Twist, you know, it, you know, but I haven't posted them on my channel, and I probably won't post them on my channel because like I I've actually stated in some of my videos, I have you know I actually said I probably wouldn't do it till after I, I you know I said I wouldn't do it until after I did another story, and since I'm a man of my word, I'm not going to do it. I'm not I, I'm. I might do, I might read it and do recordings of it, but I'm not going to post on YouTube until I put at least another story in between. Now, I've been working on another story, but that's, again, that's another discussion for another time. So, to get back on topic here, and pertaining to this story, let's talk about, um, wow, well, hold on, my brain just went... <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. There was a few other things that I wanted to talk about, and I, I honestly can't remember them. Uh, okay, OCs. Um, I was actually glad at how, kind of how few OCs there were. One of the things that is kind of a paradigm, you know, one of these things that kind of people don't like in the LMP universe is like when people make stories and they just throw in a dozen OCs and be like a few of the main characters and like... You know, they, they, and then the shipping that goes on and things like that. And, you know, people don't like that. And so I liked how there technically were, like, very few actual OCs in this. I mean, like, I think the only OCs that are actually, it's like there are, like, previ are the previous pen uh, patients of the Ponyville Mental Institution. But also Mind Twist. And, you know, with Mind Twist, you know, you kind of get to know her. And you'll get to know her a lot more in the next book, you know the next story, which is Mind Twist, the first of the insane. And it's like, you know, it you it doesn't feel like it's a story centered around an OC, which is what ends up, ends up usually happening with all these stories that have, you know, that have OCs in them. It's usually they're, either the OC is thrown in there for just to fill in something, or the OC is the main character, and then it's like, like I said, everybody, get, you know, everybody gets shipped with the main, you know, with the OC. OC gets shipped with everybody else. Um, I'm not a big fan of shipping, so you know, some of you guys might be wondering why is he talking about shipping. So that's why. Um, so the fact that Mind Twist is not like that. At least I don't feel like she's like that in the story. Mind Twist is she's not a filler character. But she's not a huge main character. She, but she's a major character. Now, she will be a main character in the next story. I mean, for crying out loud, the next story is actually named after her. But, you know, it's you know it's different. It's not like a lot of these other fics. And so, you know, I, I liked her as a character. As an OC, she did. You know, I enjoyed her. Um... Screwball, I, I actually have no, I don't know too much about Screwball. I know she's actually in the MLP universe, but I don't know too much about her, so I can't honestly say anything about, you know, if like, oh, that would, you know, that's a unique way you portrayed her or um, anything like that. But, you know, she definitely adds an interesting concept to the, you know, it's, it's I shouldn't say concept, my bad. Um, she definitely adds more character to the story. I mean, she's... Uh, in fact, I, what I find interesting is there's actually a lot of background ponies in this story, which is another thing I kind of like about it, because it's like, generally, the background ponies don't are just there in the background. They generally don't have much of a story. So, the fact that the, the writer innovated in a lot of these background characters into the story is actually really great. Screwloose, for those you don't know, is a background, is kind of a background character. She showed up for the first time 
in a fanfic. I can't remember what it's. It's the first Daring Do episode. You know, she showed up in that as like a mental patient, and she was taken back to the hospital. Um, and she acted like a dog in that one. And she actually ends up showing up apparently sometime in I think season four as a background pony. But she's actually shown to be sane at that part point, which that may or may not be addressed in this series. This is actually, the Twisted Skills has actually written three stories um, in this universe. You know, the first two I've mentioned, you know, first is The Unstable Wing of Ponyville Hospital, followed by Mind Twist, First Thing Insane. And then there's a third book, I can't remember what that's called, but it's actually centered around Screws and Screwball to some extent. So that will be something interesting. You know, maybe she'll, maybe the author, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, sorry, will address that, you know, because like I said, it is shown that Screw Loose is a background character in, you know, one of the season four episodes. So it wouldn't be, so, you know, and she looks perfectly sane and she's conversing with another pony. So it would be interesting if, like, there was later revealed in one's later stories by Twisted Skittles how she regains her sanity. But I don't know, who knows. Maybe, you know, part of it too that makes it interesting is that it doesn't, the story, you know, the, you know it does not try to, at least at this point, it doesn't really treat, try to usurp what happens in the show and therefore as a result, that's another thing, you know, that I like about it. But so that's, okay, so that's one OC. The second one is Derpy, although Derpy kind of is a very common background, sorry, not OC. I, I said OC earlier, didn't I, when I was referring to background pony. Um, she is a quite a common background pony used in a lot of these stories. I know because I've actually read a lot. Um, and even, it's like, yeah, it's like she shows up a lot, you know, as a background pony. Which is interesting because it's like, depending on what you read, you know, she's a mother or she's single or, you know, you, you have all sorts of different things. Um, the, it's like, sure, she isn't quite, at, you know, so she shows up in it and she's not, like, you know, she's not quite original, you know, in her portrayal. Because, like I said, she's basically Derpy who, um, you know, works with Dr. Hooves as a assistant. So... Yeah, that's not terribly different. And of course, Dr. Hose is still portrayed the same, but, you know, it's still, you know, still is their background characters. So the fact that they were background characters and they're, they're kind of in the story and portrayed as major characters, but, well, you know, they're not main characters, but they're major characters to some extent. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I can think of. That's all I have on my notes. But yeah, I, I like I said, I enjoy this. I enjoy this fic. Is it a good fic? I think it's a pretty good fic. Now, some people might disagree with me on that. In which case, you know, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I have my opinions. They have their opinions. I could care less. But so, yeah, that's my discussion on it. That's my commentary on this story. I I loved it. I would recommend it to any member of the MLP community. I will admit, it is kind of a... You, you do kind of cringe at times. And that's one thing I also like about this. Because, right? like, you know, you a pony gets hurt in it, and you, you, you actually kind of feel sad for them. And so I kind of like that. And so I kind of hope that people do, in fact, enjoy this fish. Okay, so I guess that's all for now. This is, this is me, Robbie Pony, signing off. And I hope you all have a good day.